Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Angry here. Oh, what a beautiful day. Monday, the 22nd of May. Nice and warm. There's a bit of low white cloud, but I think as soon as the sun burns that off, we're going to be laughing. We're going to be laughing indoors, because that's where we dentists work. We don't see much of the sun. That's why I'm taking vitamin D tablets. Actually, I'm not anymore. I gave it up. It got boring. They said I was short of vitamin D, so they put me on 20,000 international units, which is a ridiculous amount, a ridiculous amount of vitamin D. So I had to take them every other month, and then they'd only give you like, no, every other week, and then they'd only give you like six at a time, or blah, 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 and then, oh, just... So, in the end, I gave up. I don't like taking tablets. I have some patients that say that they don't like taking tablets and they always say, you know, when they need antibiotics because they've got quite a serious infection. They like, I don't like taking tablets. Battery's low. I borrowed the charger to use it somewhere else and so the thing's been off charge all night. It was on charge until I went to bed and then off charge all night. That's the weird thing about these mobile phones. They're not very mobile, are they? They're always plugged into a cord, aren't they? Just like the old, I mean, that's <laughs> the old phone that you see, the old black Bakelite phone would have been just as mobile as these if they'd just, uh, you know, been able to unplug the cord from the back and then you could have just put it in your briefcase and carried it with you to the next office. Yeah, so. And then I went, oh, I went up to St Mary's, didn't I? That's right, yeah, and had a word with the very nice lady. Just, you know, honestly, it just depends on who you get out there. They ha had an appointment at 12 o'clock, and at 12.09, I'm settling in for the long haul, right? You know, I've got cakes and uh, books and, uh, you know, videos, get the old video recorder out, stick a VHS in. I'm just settling in for the long haul. And then this little girl comes rushing up. Oh, Mr. Watson, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I'm like, what, nine minutes? <laughs> oh. Yes, 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 I hate keeping people waiting. I'm really, you know, I'm like, you must be new. Anyway, she was very pleasant. She asked me how I thought my weight loss surgery had gone. And I said, very well. Which it did do. I mean, it went very well. Can't fault the surgery at all. The uh, tendency for the old pounds and ounces to creep back on again is really not their fault. Except that, you know, I mean, they are trying to deal with the problem. I think they are rather than just do surgery. So, to that extent, it's like, <clears throat> you know, if someone can't eat, and I do a crown for them. And after I've done the crown, it's a brilliant crown, but they still can't eat. It's a bit, you know, they're like more holistic than that. The patient couldn't complain about the crown, but you haven't really dealt with the problem. And I think that's what they're, to, to their credit, that's how they look at it. They say, you know, okay, the surgery is the surgery, but the problem's still the problem. So anyway, so I'm going up again this Thursday. They want me to see the surgeon. And that's the, again, and so I don't know whether he's going to, he, he's going to propose a rule on why, uh, to which, which I'm going to say no, because I don't want that, honestly, I don't. I don't, I know people that have had rule on why surgery and the constant, you know, the vomiting, the shit in your pants, the, the endless B12 injections are, are, are very, you know, are fine if you're, you know, if you weigh 40 stone or something, but I don't. I, I need to lose about 12 kilos and I'll be happy, which is nothing really. In the grand, you know, in the place where the chairs are so wide, even I can sit in them and not touch the sides. 
But that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, we're surgeons, aren't we? And what do we propose? Surgery. I don't know that's what he's going to propose, but it may be that she just realises that he may be able to motivate me by telling me I'm going to die, which is the only thing that does tend to motivate me. <laughs> so, Mr Watson, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give you three years with your liver, unless you change something. That might, that might change something. But I'm just, uh, all the time I'm driving along fat, dumb and happy, Say. There's no excuse. Martin Kelleher, a very prominent restorative dentist, used to say this. You know, he used to say, uh, you're in your surgery, you're like, you preach prevention, you tell people to brush their teeth thoroughly, you tell people to cut down on the sugar in the diet. And he said, but your preventive message, he said, largely falls on deaf ears. He says. <laughs> and that's true, because he used to say, look at me. You know, and he was like me, you know, he was a. He was a kilo or two. Uh, he tipped the scales at a reasonable amount. And he said, I don't listen to health advice. He said, why do you expect your patients to? It's funny, isn't it? You say, you know, if you talk to people or go to lectures, that most of it is just completely, like my Irma X-ray regulations lecture was, I mean, okay, it was basically, it was a rehash of everything I knew anyway. But, uh, that has nothing memorable came out of that, you know. And yet, this one lecture by um, Martin Keller all those years ago about the the ineffective the ineffectiveness of uh, uh, prevention. But I think you find that out again when you've been in the job for a long time. You realise that this blunderbuss approach that we've got to prevention is is really inefficient and wasteful. I wouldn't say it's necessarily pointless, except that spending money inefficiently <laughs> is pointless. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, if you're going to whiten people's teeth up, then you might get a reasonably high success rate if you just target people who's, you know, you think have got nice teeth but do look a bit yellow. Um, but trying to um, tell people to brush is, sorry, junction of death, got a bus coming, or oh, a lorry coming, huh. there we go, you know people have to want to do it don't they, they have to uh, be committed, uh, it has to be at the right time you know, Same for me with the, the weight thing, you know. It came at the right time, so I was, I wanted to do it. So how do you find out when people are at the right time? You know, what do you do? I mean, you might say, well, just tell everyone, and then you might catch someone for whom it's the right time. But I don't think that's true. I don't think that's correct. What, what, uh, I mean, certainly we improve the tangibility of the issue, you know, by staining everybody's teeth up with um, disclosing solution. What you do is you draw the problem to people's attention who perhaps didn't know that the problem existed or that it was as bad as they thought or... Bad driving. Somebody in a white van pulled that right in front of somebody coming the other way. Or what you do is you, um, you know, if somebody says, uh, you know, I want to get my teeth sorted out, what you do is you put all your resources into that person because they are then at that point very receptive and will listen to you and do what you ask, you know, and do, do what you suggest. And then they affect the change, you know, you really just give them the information. But surgeons suggest surgery, that's the problem. That's why I'm thinking he's going to suggest, like, you know, Mr. Watson, you've had this X, X uh, surgery and, you know, you're obviously not happy, so why don't you have the Z surgery? The Y, the Z surgery. It's, the, it's a, just an extension of that old saying, isn't it? That to a hammer, everything looks like a nail.
we, um, I mean, as a profession, it's one of those modular homes over there, a hoof house. It's on four lorries. Oh God, I've just run over a teddy bear that's fallen off the front of a dust car. It's, it's all going on, it's all going. This camera ought to be facing forwards, to be quite honest with you. Because really you don't need to see me while I'm droning on, do you? you, you you'd get far more out of actually seeing what's going on in front of me because I tell you it's never the same two days in a row oh I'm gonna be late in fact I am already late so I'll wind up because I need to make a quick call to the surgery but no what I was saying is that uh, you know we tend to uh, suggest what our speciality is so if uh, you like making dentures and the patient's got a toothache, you tend to suggest that they have the tooth out and add it to their denture. If you like doing endo, you'll suggest that they save it and have it endoed. If you're an implantologist, you'll suggest that they have it out and replaced by an implant. <laughs> you know, so just be aware of your own personal bias. Personally, I like doing endo, and I can't see, I honestly can't see why people have teeth out that could be endoed. But then I don't look at the time and the money side of things, you know. I mean, for me, that's part of the price you pay to save a tooth. Uh, but I, I understand that, you know, when people get their teeth into these sort of states. They're like, um, it's a bit like, uh, I don't know, having an extension on your house and not maintaining it or painting it and the wood going rotten and the extension sort of getting to the point where someone says, well, um, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money to save this. The implication being that you've balls it up <laughs> by not not looking after it. To which you might well say, well, in that case, just let the bloody thing fall down, you know. Just to forget it. Okay, so, Bitcoin price is doing well. I think it was about $1,700, wasn't it, last time I spoke to you? It's about 21 now. Watch this space. Something big is going on in Bitcoin. I'll uh, talk to you tomorrow. Bye.